What's happening, Hypesters? Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about referral rewards. Referral rewards are a great way to encourage your players to share your games with their friends, with their families, and get more players into your game. How does it work? It's really quite simple. You just offer your player some rewards for sharing your game. And you can also offer them rewards for each person that comes to your game from the link that they share. If you'd like to add referral rewards to your own game, there's two different ways you can do it. First, there's the easy way. We'll go into our asset library, we'll navigate to pre-mades, and then we're looking for share game sign with pop-up and referral rewards. We can add that into our world, and then we have a little referral rewards station here. We can place it where we want it. And then with that pre-made come a short set of instructions here to help you connect it into your already existing game. It's pretty simple here. It's just using a broadcaster. So you either need to change that broadcast signal to whatever signal you're already using in your game or go to your resource system and add a broadcast listener that can add that money when the player does it. Otherwise, it's already set up for you. If we go over here and we walk in the thing, we get our share pop up, we hit share, we can copy the link, great, close, thank you. We get 100 just for sharing and then we will get additional rewards for each referral that comes in. So that's the basics of working with the pre-made, nice and simple, very easy, but if you'd like to know a bit more about how this system works and how you can build one for yourself, Keep watching, that's what's coming up. Okay, so the first bit of logic that we're gonna wanna build here is going to be a check for whether or not the player has referrals to redeem. To do that, we're gonna need four nodes. First, from the logic category, we're gonna need a compare, we're going to need a number, and we're gonna need a math operator. And from the meta category, we're gonna need the player info node. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to take the total number of referrals that the player has, and we're going to subtract the number of referrals that they have already redeemed, and then we'll pass that value into the compare, and this will let us know if the player has any more referrals to redeem. So we'll start by grabbing the player info node, and we're gonna take the own share referral count and put that into value A. Then we're gonna take this number node and we're gonna give it a name here because we're gonna to need to be able to call this later. And this will be redeemed referrals. Obviously we're gonna start out at a value of zero and we're gonna plug that into value B. And now in our math operator, very simple, we're gonna change this value to subtract. So now your own share referral count minus your redeemed referrals is the total number of referrals you have to redeem. And we're going to send that into value A of the compare. And now the compare value B, we're gonna set that to zero. And we're gonna set our operator to greater than. So now if the value coming out of this math operator is greater than zero, we will get a positive outcome from the compare. If it is zero or less, it can't be less. So if it is zero, then we will get the negative outcome from the compare. So that first little bit of logic is ready. Next, let's talk a little bit about user interfaces. I've already prepared three pop-ups here for our referral rewards flow. They're very basic and simple pop-ups. Let's just take a look at what they have in them. First, we have the share pop-up. This is the one that the player gets if they have no referrals to redeem. It will encourage them to share the game. It will tell them what they get for those referrals. And of course, there's a button there to share the game. Next is the rewards pop-up. This is the one that the player will get if they do have referrals to redeem. This one will tell them how many referrals they have. And of course we have a button to allow them to redeem those referrals. And then finally, we have a thank you pop-up. This one comes after the button has been pressed on either of the previous two pop-ups, and it thanks the player for sharing your game. It encourages them to come back and check on their referral count later. And in this case, we've also added a comment button there so that we can encourage some more social interaction with our game. So in this video, I'm not gonna go into how exactly to build your own user interfaces. If you would like some more information on that, we have some videos on our YouTube and some resources on the Learning Hub that can help you out with that. 
So the next bit of logic we need to build is the rewards portion of this setup. Now this could be very different depending on how the resource system in your game works. In this example, I'm using the resource system from the skin shop template, and this saves a value for coins and gems in a function source. There are of course different ways you can do this, but I would highly recommend that if you have any sort of resource saving system, the function source is going to be a great way to do this. It makes it very easy to update and retrieve the values saved within that system through the function caller node. So speaking of nodes, we're going to need four new nodes for this little piece of logic as well. From the logic category, we're going to need a function caller. We're also going to need another math operator, and we're going to need another number node. From the meta category, we're also going to need a social actions node. All right, so the first thing I'll do here is set up the function caller. We'll go into our function caller. We're gonna to wanna to set that reference object. In our case, the resource system is the only function source we have in this game, so super easy, we just pick that. And now you can see in the function caller node, we have inputs for adding and subtracting coins and gems, and we also have outputs for getting the player's coin and gems value. Next, let's start calculating the rewards. We have promised that the player will get 100 coins and one gem for each referral they get into the game. So first, let's do the coins. We're going to go back to our original math operator, and we're going to send that value into value A of this math operator. Now, we're giving 100 coins for each referral, so we are going to take that value and multiply it by 100. Now, this math operator is outputting the total number of coins that the player should be getting, and we'll send that to the add coins uh, input of that function caller, and we are going to change this into an executing node. Now, we have promised one gem for each referral, so it is one-to-one, -one, so we don't need to do any math. We're going to, again, go to this math operator, and we're going to send that total number of referrals uh, that are available to redeem, and we're going to send it into that number node, and then that number node is going to go to the add gems input of our function caller. And again, we're gonna execute. Now we also need to update the redeemed referrals that the player has. And in this case, because we're using a number node here for the gems, we can also use that for this purpose as well. So we're gonna take that output, we're gonna put it into the value of our redeemed referrals number node, and we are going to set that operation to add. So we are always now adding to the value in that number each time we redeem rewards. And that's going to ensure that the player cannot redeem the same referral rewards multiple times. Now there's one more thing that we're gonna set up in this rewards logic before we go back to our user interfaces and connect everything together. And that's gonna be in this social action node. On shared, we're going to turn on the visibility of our thanks pop-up. And what that's going to do is after the player goes through the flow and they copy the share link, it's going to give them that thanks pop-up. All right, so now most of our logic here is ready. We just need to connect everything together. So we're going to go back to this compare that we created in the first part. And just as a reminder, this compare is checking whether or not the player has referrals to redeem. So if the player does have referrals to redeem, then that means we want to give them the reward pop-up. So we'll turn that one on. And if they do not have referrals to redeem, we want to give them the share pop-up. Next, let's open our rewards pop-up. And here we have one button, and that is redeem on start. So when the player presses that button, they're redeeming their rewards. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to execute this math node. That's going to give them their coins. And then we're also going to execute this number node. That's going to give them their gems as well as update this redeemed referrals. Now, if we were doing math here for the gems as well, we would want an additional number node to hold that value and update these redeemed referrals. Now, we also have in this one, we have an input here for the number value that is showing the player how many referrals they have to redeem. So again, we're gonna grab that from this math node, that value output is going to go into our number value in the rewards pop-up. So then the last thing we want to do here is when this button is pressed, we want to turn off the visibility of the reward pop-up and we want to turn on the visibility of the thanks pop-up. 
Next, let's grab the share pop-up. This one just has one button. It is the share button. So when the player presses it, we want to, in the social actions node, prompt to share. We again are also going to turn off the visibility of that pop-up. Now this one, we're not going to immediately turn the thanks pop-up on because first we're gonna go into the social actions node. That's gonna wait for the player to actually hit the share button and then it will give them the thanks pop-up. Now, this logic is mostly ready, but we need a way to trigger it. Now, of course, there's many, many, many different ways you can do this, but a very popular way in Hype Hype right now is an area trigger. So to make that, we're gonna grab two objects from the asset library. First, I'm gonna take the rounded corner selector, and this is going to mark on the ground the area that the player should go to. It's a little bit small, let's make it a little bit bigger. And I'm also going to just add any sort of cube. This simple cube will work fine. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna put it in the middle of the area. Now in both of these, I'm gonna to go to physical properties and I'm going to turn on the sensor. In the cube, we'll also turn on the sensor. We're also going to go in the visual and we're gonna make this invisible. We don't need to see that, it's just there for the player to interact with. And then to go along with that, we will add a collision detector. So in the collision detector, we're gonna take that cube and we're gonna set it as our target. Our trigger width group is gonna be green here. All the player pre-mades are in the green group. Now the collision detector has two jobs. When the player first enters the area, we're gonna execute this compare. It's going to check whether or not they have referrals to redeem, and then it's going to open the appropriate pop-up. And now when the player leaves the area, we need it to close all the pop-ups, and we don't necessarily know which pop-up window it has open. So on collision end, we are going to turn off the visibility of all three of these. So now all our logic here is set up, but we have two more very critical steps before it's ready to release. So first we're going to want to save some data. It's very important when we're dealing with rewards and things that the player gets in your game that we make sure we are saving that information to the player's profile so that when they come back, they can retain those awards. In this case, we have three critical values that we need to save. So we will go to the player save settings. This is found in the logic tab of the toolbar, player save settings, and we're gonna to navigate to numbers. And now we have a list here of all the available number nodes in our game. This is one reason why it's very important that you name your nodes. So of course, in our resource system, we wanna make sure we're saving the total number of coins our player has and the total number of gems our player has. And then in the logic that we just set up, we wanna make sure that we are saving the number, of play, the number of referrals the player has already redeemed. With those three values saved, this logic is more or less ready, but the last thing we wanna do before we release is test it. It's always super important to test your logic before you let it go. Make sure everything is working, you haven't missed something critical. So in this case, to test this, I'm going to temporarily replace this player info node with a number node, and all this will do is allow us to manually set that referral count number. So I can go in here and I can say, the player now has five referrals, and I'll go in here and it's boom, you have five referrals, I'll hit redeem, they get 500 coins, five gems, perfect. Everything's working great. Now we can go back in and we can say, oh, they've gotten some more referrals, now they have 10. Now, of course, in this case, it should have saved that we already redeemed those five. So when we go in, we should again get five referrals, I'll hit redeem, we got a thousand coins and 10 gems. So that's the total of 10 referrals that we got. Perfect, everything's working great. Let's test it one more time with a different number. Let's say like 16. So now we're gonna have six more referrals is what we should be getting. Boom, six referrals. Now we've gotten the rewards, 1600 coins, 16 gems. We can leave a comment here. Ooh, we missed something. We forgot to connect that comment button in the thank you pop-up. So when the comment starts, we want to go and open the comments. Ooh, 
but we found another little mistake. There's an infinite loop here, but not a big deal because this does not need to be an executing link. So we'll just turn off that execute. We'll go and do this again, and it should be happy with that link now. There we go. And of course, just to make sure it's working, share, boom. Now we get the comment, we hit comment, and it opens up the comments. Perfect. Everything's working. Our referral reward system is ready for release, and this tutorial video is done. If you would like to see the example project used in this video, you can find a link in the description below. Good luck, creators. Peace out.